Is Johnny Depp Melungeon? If I was Johnny Depp, this is the one that I would be pointing people to. This is an incredible legacy to be a part of. It's Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thank you so much for being with me here on my channel where we talk about American identity and family stories. And a few weeks ago, I started delving in a little bit to my Melungeon roots. Didn't know I had them until 2024. And it has been a learning experience for me. And I did a video about Elvis, if he was Melungeon or not. And a lot of people took umbrage with that because they assumed Melungeon meant mulatto, as if that's the worst thing that could happen. And um, so it was a little bit ridiculous, but I did a really great video with Heather Andalina, who's the president of the Melungeon Heritage Association. And I plan to do some more videos with folks who identify as Melungeon. And I had come across something claiming that Johnny Depp was Melungeon. Depp's roots reach deep into the early days of America, like many of us who have family that has been in the United States for a long time. And he's connected to a pretty surprising figure. So Johnny Depp has mentioned his Native American heritage here and there. He said that, quote, I guess I have some Native American somewhere down the line. My great grandmother was quite a bit of Native American. She grew up Cherokee or maybe Creek Indian. So he wasn't really sure. It's kind of that Cherokee grandmother story that a lot of us have had. And sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's not true. But that's kind of um, the extent of what he has shared, at least, um, you know, maybe he knows more, but that's what he shared. It has definitely uh, sparked a fair bit of debate, especially since he has played native characters. It, it makes us, I think it's important to think about the roles that Johnny Depp has picked and how maybe those even have connected to his understanding of his identity or his exploration of his identity. But the spotlight on the Native American uh, ancestry really only scratches the surface of his family story. Now, before I tell you about this really important ancestor in his family tree, I want to go to an article um, from like, it's like from 11 years ago when the Lone Ranger came out. I don't know if you saw that movie. Uh, it starred Johnny Depp. It was the movie adaptation of an old TV and radio show. And people were kind of starting to pick apart Johnny Depp's ancestry again because of his role in this movie. It says University of Cincinnati's Native American expert, Kenneth Tankersley, uh, Pequa Shawnee said this about it. He said that although Johnny Depp is not a card carrying member, of a Native American tribe. Depp does have Native American ancestry. He is from Kentucky and Melungeon by ancestry. And the article goes on to say that Melungeons were Sephardic Jews and Muslims escaping to religious freedom in the New World. And when they arrived, they married into the Native American community. I thought they kind of got that. Um, I think they're leaving out a lot. And so that's a story I want to tell you right now. So we're going to dig deep into Johnny Depp's family tree. And we're going to find Elizabeth Key Grinstead. This is Johnny Depp's eighth great grandmother. So I really haven't even gone that far um, on all my lines yet. But her life story is a stark reminder of the fluidity of social identities in early America. She was born to a mixed race couple and she won a landmark case for her freedom in 1656. On a sunny day back in July of 1656, Elizabeth turned the tables in a way that had never been seen before in the North American colonies. So picture this, there's a woman of African descent taking a stand in a courtroom to demand her freedom. Now let's rewind to her beginnings to get the full picture. Elizabeth was born 1630 in Warwick County, Virginia. Her mom was an African woman who was under enslavement and her dad, Thomas Key, was a white planter. Now, because of her mixed heritage and the circumstances of her birth, she was baptized and placed into indentured servitude rather than outright slavery. And we talked a little about this in the Bacon's Rebellion video, but the difference, although sometimes nominal, was that an indentured servant had the hopes of possibly being free. But if you were just enslaved, that, that was off the table for you. So the servitude took a turn, though, when she ended up with a man named John Mottram. Elizabeth met William Grinstead, an English indentured servant brought over by Mottram. They hit it off, they had a kid named John, <laughs> and started dreaming of a different life. But when Mottram passed away in 1655, those dreams were threatened because Mottram's heirs decided that Elizabeth and her son were actually slaves, not indentured servants. So that's when William, who is now a practicing lawyer and no longer an indentured servant himself, decided to fight back. Their court battle wasn't just a legal skirmish, though. It was a fight for identity, freedom, and family. And this is one of those cases where um, I'm sad that I hadn't heard about it because this is such a landmark experience. 
And they argued that Elizabeth's dad was English and that by law, this meant she should be free. They also pointed out that she had been baptized and she was a practicing Christian, which again, if you had seen the Bacon's Rebellion video, you know that there was a delineation made for Christians and non-Christians. So they believe that this should exempt her from enslavement. Now, despite losing at first, this was no one and done, they didn't give up. They took their case to the General Assembly, where the committee agreed with Elizabeth, citing her father's status as an Englishman and her baptism as valid reasons why she should be a free woman. But this victory wasn't just for Elizabeth. It was a moment that challenged the very foundations of how slavery was viewed and implemented in colonial Virginia. Now, but this doesn't mean there were changes overnight, right? Um, Bacon's Rebellion was was coming up fast after this. And then you have the Black Codes and the Virginia Slave Codes of 1705. Now, Elizabeth's win was a a beacon of hope. It was a sign that even in these rigid definitions, freedom and slavery was not as fixed as it always seemed. But the victory was short-lived because in the years that followed, laws that had allowed Elizabeth to claim her freedom were dismantled, okay? Loophole closed and replaced by new ones that sought to cement slavery and racial divisions more firmly. If you have not seen the video on Bacon's Rebellion, watch that right after this. Uh, It is of the utmost importance to understand what is going on here. One of the most telling moves came in 1667. This was 11 years, only 11 years after Elizabeth's landmark case. The Virginia legislature passes a law saying that baptism cannot change a person's status from enslaved to free. And this was a direct counter to part of the argument that won Elizabeth her freedom. The shift was a clear signal. The rules were changing and not in favor of freedom or equality. Now, Elizabeth Key's story, though, is more than just a chapter in history. It's a reminder of the fluid nature of status and freedom. And even in early colonial times before America was America, and a testament to the fact that legal and societal norms can still be challenged and changed. So her case highlights the beginning of a system of racialized slavery that would would shape the future of America, but it shows us that at one time, these systems were not as rigidly defined as they could become. Johnny Depp is her direct descendant. So yes, he he may have some Native ancestry. Um, he, He may have Melungeon roots based on his Kentucky heritage, but really, this is an incredible story to have in your family tree. And if I was Johnny Depp, this is the one that I would be pointing people to. This is an incredible legacy to be a part of. It's absolutely incredible. You know, I think it's a beautiful lens to examine what American identity is. So uh, Elizabeth's resilience, her fight against these boundaries offers us a window into the formation of what would become American identity. One that was contested, negotiated, reshaped, through the lives of individuals like her. Well, when you look at Johnny Depp, what do you see? Well, you know, if you if you Google, what's Johnny Depp's background? What's his ancestry? People are always looking up, asking, is he Native American? Is he this or that? But beneath the surface of that is a deeper, more complex story. You know, the, the mention of Melungeon heritage introduces a complex layer to Johnny Depp's ancestry. Melungeons are, are mixed ethnicity people living in Appalachian regions, and they have long been the subject of speculation and myth. And their origins, often a blend of European, African, and Native American ancestry, mirror the multifaceted identity of America herself. So while the direct evidence linking Johnny Depp to Melungeons, I think, is kind of elusive, I haven't found anything um, that connects there or something that he said about it. What I found in his family tree is just as beautiful. And if you would like to support the channel and get this content ad-free, I'd love to have you join me over at my Patreon. I'll leave a link to it below. Otherwise, we'll talk soon.